You know, sometimes you want to play a game after you've had a long day as a way to decompress. You had a long day at work? Go relax by playing the most stressful game imaginable. You got home from school? Go relax by playing a farming simulator. You know, take your time, get to know the people in the town. You've had a great day? Go relax by playing the most stressful game imaginable. And then there's the other times where you open the Steam library just to look at it and then close it and open YouTube and waste away that valuable time like you're, like you're doing now. All right, don't do that. Unless unless it's my channel. If it's my, if it's my channel, it's all right. Keep doing it. You're doing great. I love you. Recently, I've been in this boat. I couldn't find a game to play. I would open, look at my Steam library, and then close it, and then go watch some random bullshit YouTube video number 45. It, it's, it's like being in a desert, stranded, and you're looking for a mirage that's actually water. So I spent a long time looking for a game that I did want to play and make a video on, and I struck fucking gold. I stumbled upon a game called Abiotic Factor, and it looked like Half-Life 2, so I was interested. Holy shit, is this game amazing. So let's let's talk about it. Abiotic Factor describes itself as a one to six player survival horror experience. Now it is set in an underground research facility where you are going to be caught in between a paranormal containment failure, much like SCP, with some sprinkles aspects of horror in there and, and soldiers that you're gonna have to shoot. Now, whenever you boot up the game, it's your first day on the job and it's set in a massive science facility that you were transferring to from a previous one that you worked out with the same company. And straight off, I loved the feeling and look of this game. The opening driving scene where you're going through that desert felt like a scene from The Big Lead Show in the best possible way imaginable. Now, whenever you get to the office, you get told that you picked a crazy first day, as there's been some very crazy activity going on. Call me fucking Zach Baggins from Ghost Adventures, dude. I'm ready. I'm ready to get in there. So you go down this elevator and you start the tutorial. Which, which is awesome because it has this guy. I don't know who voiced this guy, but he, he is hilarious. You do a bunch of boring tutorial shit, but you do learn to throw nets on a mannequin. So, so that's cool, I guess. I mean, it's a little freaky, but whatever works. After the tutorial, you go back to the menu, and this is where you get to make your character. My guy is pretty sweet. Ready to see him? You sure? Boom. Look at that guy. This is, what, this is what a peak male looks like. Fuck Alpha TikTok, this is Alpha. Right here, this guy. Um, now not only do you get to create your guy in the sense of customizing what he looks like, there is also a very similar skill picking system like a Project Zomboid. If you look behind me, there's negative and positive traits that you get to distribute to your character with a basic point system. If you pick negative traits, you get given points to distribute into the positive ones, and you pick what negative and positive traits you want. Which is honestly really cool, and it's it's, it's some of the, some of them are kind of funny. Like you have to go to the bathroom less, or you need to eat less. Just basic stuff like that, and it can change the game. So you start your world, and you run into Doctor Thule, which I mean, everyone in this game looks like the Half Life Two scientist. And the entire time, I was thinking of that one clip where he's like, "Stop fucking with the microwave, Gordon." But Doctor Thule basically says that he has been locked in the cafeteria for a while, and he went down here just to get some coffee. And the entire facility is on lockdown. And you look to your left, and you'll see a crazy man named Jaeger who is locked out of the room, asking you to let him in. But you kind of learn how the crafting system works, and you learn that the primary uh, way to get supplies is by dismantling and breaking down office supplies. And also living things. <sighs> like these little, uh, these little Cocoa Puff guys. You explode them and then take their everything, and you can cook them to eat them. Once you get all the supplies to build the set of energy brick for Jaeger, uh, you unlock the door, and immediately he gets killed by what I can only assume to be a Halo Flood uh, kind of puppy. But after this point, this is where the game really opens up. That was kind of your like second tutorial to show you how to craft things. But from here on out, you kind of progress through the story and the world is open to you. Now, like I said, this game is one to six players. I played this game solo simply because I was really the only one in my friend group that was interested in it. And I just wanted to see what it was about. But I would highly recommend playing it with your friends. The game is already great, so I can only imagine what kind of goofy shit you can do with, like, six people. So if you are interested in playing this game, see if you can get a friend to play with you, because it's a ton of fun on your own, so having a friend would make it that much better. But, uh, for lack of a better term, whenever you get out to the map, it is fucking massive. The map is so in-depth with a variety of really cool areas that are entirely different from each other with different looks, different enemies, different items, and you unlock different parts of the map as you progress through the story, unlocking harder and harder enemies. And these different areas aren't just like 
areas. They could be an entirely separate map, entirely separate game. Have their own NPCs, some of them have traders, and their own secrets. One of the coolest things about the map to me is the night slash day cycle. Whenever it reaches 9 p.m., all of the power in the facility shuts down and the lights go off. And if you don't have a flashlight, you can't see shit. Now, flashlights aren't very hard to find, and in fact, whenever you get further in the game, you can actually put flashlights on your weapon. But the point being is I greatly appreciate the usefulness of a flashlight in a game. There are so many games where having a flashlight doesn't really matter and you can see without it and nighttime just kind of feels like an unnecessary just joke if you're not going to make it a part of the gameplay really and just use it as a selling point. But nighttime in this game is, is genuinely fucking terrifying and something that you do have to worry about. If you don't have a flashlight, you can't see enemies, there's spooky things everywhere, and they will get your ass. And as you also explore the map, you'll meet Jerome. He's, uh, he's odd. He's an, he's an odd guy. He's friendly. Just, he's weird. <laughs> but with the skills being like Project Zomboid, I don't want you to necessarily think that they're as confined. You can really do whatever you want or have whatever role you want. It's not like in the sense of you need a thief in Project Zomboid to hotwire a car or something similar where you don't have a skill if you don't do it. But the premise is to set up a base somewhere, craft items, go exploring, you level up as you explore and you unlock the ability to craft new items or use new things. And then with the new items you gather, you learn blueprints to make even better items, dude. Wow. Wow. And another feeling that this game gave me that I absolutely loved was that your base feels cozy. Whenever you're out exploring, you'll be hiding in a random room or event, begging that an enemy doesn't see you because your item's broken, you're hungry, you're thirsty, you don't have any ammo, and you're just shit out of luck. So whenever you do finally book it, whenever the coast is clear, you get back to your base and you can fix your hunger, thirst items and it feels like a safe haven because your bed is there and it looks all cozy and Jerome is there and he looks all cozy. It's just, it's a feeling that not a lot of games get. Like, it, the most similar thing I can compare it to is whenever you've been out exploring for a long time in Minecraft and you finally see your base again. Now, you already got all this amazing stuff that I've talked about, okay? You already got all this, all this bargaining shit. Go play the game. But, that's not even what really made this game all special to me. I know, it's crazy. I've already talked about all this cool shit. But what made the game really cool to me was the exploration and the story. The story is very enticing. As whenever you start, you have no idea what's going on at all. Zero fucking clue. You're just like the new guy. And then you start doing a little quest and you start getting little breadcrumbs as to what's going on. And that makes you want to keep going so you can get the full loaf, you know what I'm saying? You, you get what I'm talking about now? And the story puts you through so many different scenarios. I don't want to make this game sound like it's just a sci-fi game because it almost takes all of these different genres of gaming and mixes it into one. I mean, it has legitimately a little bit of everything for everyone, I think. There's zombies, soldiers, aliens, scary ass robots that only come out during night to patrol the facility. F fucking Jerome. And you can just tell that there is so much care put into this game. Genuinely. And I love that it feels like a real survival game. You don't ever feel like it's easy, but in a really good way. Healing isn't super easy to come by. Every single resource is, is valuable and you need it to craft things. And with limited item space, you're going to need to weigh what items you can take with you and what items you're going to have to leave behind and possibly come back for when the entire area is dangerous to even go back for it. Food and water are needed enough to be worrying. And your character will let you know when he's hungry or thirsty with the funniest voice lines I've ever heard. I believe I need to, uh, defecate. And the intricacy of the world building behind these emails and hidden terminals. Fucking eat your heart out, Miyazaki. God damn it, I'm sorry, all right? This game is just good. Stop watching and just go play it, dude. God, fuck. I'm kidding. Please click subscribe. The combat feels really heavy. Like every fight really matters and you have to actively think about what you're doing in order to win it. You need to weigh how much ammo you have, how many enemies there are. Do you have enough ammo to take on all of them? Do you have enough meds to survive all of this? Do you want to go sneaky or loud? That feeling of struggling in an early game area to thriving because you explored and found all the blueprints and new badass weapons. Like a, like a fucking saw blade gun or a, or a double barrel. And then you go to a new area and you find even more badass weapons like this lightning gun. 
That that thing is my go the lightning gun is the best fucking weapon in the game, by the way. That feeling is addicting. And the progression isn't only in the maps either. You all unlock shortcuts uh, across the entire map that's like reminiscent of Dark Souls 1. Where it all links to the same center and it's just so cool. You can also get a forklift. That you can do tricks on, like this. I call this one the, the flip. I think you know why. <laughs> it's also got a little box on the front. So you can put your goodies in it. I went into this game not knowing what expectations to have at all. Like, never heard of this game, saw it had positive views, tried it out, absolutely blown away. It was scary, addicting, and fun. Most of all, a good game. So go play it, because it's awesome. I've played for 20 hours, and I feel like I have scratched the surface of what is possible. Like, there's some areas that I didn't even know existed until I'm running back through previous areas I went to, only to realize that I could, like, put an office chair on a desk and then jump into like a ceiling tile and there's a hidden area and there's just genuinely so much to explore so go play it and that's really all i have to say so thank you for watching uh my name is cambrodia and i hope you have a wonderful rest of your day thank you